I think the role of local authorities in addressing climate change is absolutely critical. Um, they have huge responsibilities for delivering housing, for um, maintaining our infrastructure and also for you know things like waste removal and so on and all of those things have enormous carbon impacts and so you know they, they really are a critical player when it comes to reducing national uh, carbon emissions. And I mean to what extent do you think that many local authorities are authentic and serious about this or how to what extent do you think some of them and it's been called this do virtual signaling. They say what they're doing, it's good, but they don't tell you about all the other things they're not doing. Yes, I think that local authorities are, how should we put this? I, I think that their focus is quite narrow. Um, in most cases that I have seen, the climate reports, uh, the climate action reports that I've seen and the target setting is very narrow in its scope and doesn't look at what we call, uh, you know, a wider, what we call scope three emissions, which is more down the supply chain over which they have a huge amount of influence. And this is where you know, I've been very active in campaigning against waste incineration. This is where, you know, it's a huge blind spot um, within councils carbon accounting because they don't include those downstream uh, emissions over which they have an, a huge influence, for example, in financing these sorts of facilities and driving waste into those um, areas. And so, you know, I, I have been frustrated and, and try to shed a light on the requirement for better, more um, more transparent and certainly wider ranging carbon accounting from councils. Yeah, I mean, I think accounting is a big issue and I think we should deal with that in another meeting and, you know, give it more time because measurement and accounting is really critical. Some local authorities, including ours and Enfield, are actually saying district heating is very green. Mm -hmm. um, we won't talk about how it's sourced at the moment, but let's take district heating as itself. Do you think that is one solution to tackling the climate emergency? I think district heat networks in their fundamental principles um, are a very good idea, but they need to have a very... Um, they need to have much tighter regulation at the moment in the UK it's it's largely unregulated and so the quality of different district heat networks it varies wildly I think fundamentally there are good district heat networks and there are many very bad ones um, but the consistency and quality is poor um, I think you know they it needs a lot of thought you know it, it's very difficult you you can't say a district heat network is a good thing because for example losses heat losses in transmission can be enormous you know the quality of the pipework the distance between the energy source and the energy user those things mean that a district heat network can be really incredibly inefficient and actually worse than having a boiler in your home and so you know there is not a universal statement that a district heat work network is a good thing but as with many things you know we have um, people who are not experts who are specifying these things and saying district heat network is a good thing let's go installing them and getting grants and all kinds of things on, on inappropriate technology with non-experienced contractors bidding at the lowest price and so we end up with really poor quality. But some local authorities do say don't they we are doing district heating and because of that we are green and yes. and and, and the one in where we live in, in Enfield are actually doing it, sourcing their heat through the incinerator. And so they're saying the incinerator is that screen. It's part of our green plan. Yeah. How do you react to that? Uh, tosh. It's absolute tosh. You cannot claim that a district heat network linked to an incinerator is a good thing. It absolutely is not. I mean, it's absolute logical fallacy to claim that it is such. So, you know, we've done calculations on the sorts of housing that would be at 
you know meridian water in these sorts of areas you would get far greater climate gains from making those homes passive homes for example um, where absolute minimal heat input is required um, one of the fundamental problems with Edmonton incinerator in Enfield is that they built part of their business case and the justification for rebuilding and expanding the incinerator was that it was going to have a district heat network attached to it. Well, we should be phasing out incineration. You know, the Climate Change Committee has said that we need um, incinerators to remain unbuilt you know all of those that are planned need to remain in the ground and not be built you know we shouldn't be increasing capacity and then claiming that adding a district heat network to it greens it it is not a source of green energy the carbon emissions the air pollution and simply the destruction of natural resources that could be could remain in the economy being you know retained reused recycled and so on it, you know, this, it is an absolute fallacy um, to claim that incinerators provide green energy. But can they be green if they are sourced by renewables, by solar, by wind and so on? I mean, can you then justify that you're moving in a green direction? You can, but all of the previous things I've said around the fundamental physics of the system must be considered. So the the distance between the energy source and the home it's being provided to have to be reduced. Um, the source of the energy must be truly green, not burning plastics. You know, burning plastics is dirtier than burning clean gas. You know, so we would prefer that you were using natural gas in a district heat network rather than incineration. Uh, nonetheless, um, green energy sources, yes. Um, a well thought out district that's very compact, uh, very efficient. And, you know, from first principles, the properties that are being designed and built from new must be built to passive house standards so that they are well insulated. They require absolute minimal heat. And actually, in that case, you may design out the heat network and in any case, because those homes would require so little energy that that could be serviced by, you know, very, very small plant within the house itself. Um, so, you know, those, these are the issues that we're trying to tackle. You know, I'm, I work in the property sector and um, myself and some colleagues, architects, engineers, and so on are putting together a, a thought piece around heat networks and the way that we design these because they are fundamentally flawed. Okay, but local authorities, as I said, are looking at um, incineration for district heating. They're looking at lots of other things they're doing, and they're saying it's green. Now, do you think we're moving into an era of extreme greenwashing? I mean, I know Michael Mann in his book, uh, the um, uh, which he looks at the new climate war, says, you know, the deniers have gone there are not many of them left. What we've got is companies still extracting fuel, still burning um, fuels that emit carbon, but they're doing other things that are good, like helping with waste and so on. And so they're saying we're green. It's a deflection. Mm -hmm. Do you think greenwashing is now becoming one of the biggest problems we have to face? Yeah, I think it is. I think, you know, this, this is a really good example of many of these issues are complex you know they're very complex engineering problems there's no right or wrong answer and it requires people to stay the course to do their research to understand the technology to be comfortable with all the different um, issues that impact this technology and our councillors aren't there they're not there so you know they things like incineration they think oh energy from waste good landfill bad they haven't got the attention span to sit through the discussion around the fact that you know landfill has effectively been taxed out of our economy in the uk you know so really what we're talking about is the burning of resources you know and they've been sold on uh, a lot of greenwash from the sector now that's really pervasive but when you start to look at you know, I, I always think follow the money. You know, where is this message coming from about things being green? Is it coming from an entity that seeks to make money? Or is it coming from an entity that comes from a really scientific research background, a community strength, social justice background? Because, you know, one of those sources I think you can probably trust and the other you probably ought to bring a healthy amount of scepticism to. Um, I think the other way round has been what's been happening in that, you know, commercial entities who seek to make a lot of money from these exercises are being held up as trustworthy. And I think that's fundamentally wrong. And I think 
in an era where greenwash is rife, we all need to take responsibility for learning about these things and understanding that there is no clear black and white here. We must learn about the different intricacies and um, interrogate these solutions more.